evening, it's time for the worshipers around the world to gather. It's time for an hour with the lover of our souls, Jesus.
What a privilege to lift our voices and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Praise God. He is everything he said he was. And even when I can't see him moving and working, he is. And he's working for your and my good. What a God. What a mighty God. Aren't you glad that he has a personal relationship with you? I'm so glad. It's so great to have you with us tonight. We're going to have a lot of wonderful times with the Lord, I trust, and be sharing a little bit out of uh, the last couple of Psalms, talking about praise a little later in the program, because he's just good, and he's worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. All right. Are you ready to have kind of a uh, a little kick out of the gate here. I went to the Brooklyn Tabernacle to minister several years ago, and this was the song that they were singing when Pastor Jim and I walked into the sanctuary on Sunday night. And it kind of kind of got in my bones. I, mean, I loved it. All right? Be happy. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. singing that. We have the victory in Jesus. Oh, victory. In... Okay, I won't go there. Oh, man, that's just fun to do. You know, I told my, uh, I was talking to my buddy Ken Gruen just a little while ago today. Ken was like uh, one of my, well, he was my first boss in music ministry. If you've read my book, the uh, 30 Seconds in His Presence, you will hear about Ken a, a few times because he was kind of a mentor and uh, we worked together for uh, a few years in, in my home church growing up. And uh, Anyway, I was talking to him and I said, you know what, I finally, after all these years, I think I'm finding a comfort zone in just being who I am with the tunes that God gives me and with some of the older stuff and not having to play and learn all the new 
fangled, what I call non-melodious <laughs> praise and worship tunes that drive me crazy because I love melody. And he said, oh, absolutely, Terry, you just do what God put in your heart to do because that's who you are, and this is. Singing an old song like Victory is Mine, that's who I am, singing the old hymns. That meant so much to me and uh, has touched so many millions of people for centuries around the world. I don't want to let those go. I want to continue to do those as God gives grace. So uh, praise God, I'm finding a little bit more of a comfort zone, I think even through this program, because so many of you comment on how you wish we could sing some of the older tunes that were so anointed and carry such a power and such a glory of God. So welcome to these kind of a program, these kind of programs. We're going to continue to do that. And I love some of the new stuff too. There's uh, on my new album, um, on the Your Kingdom Come album is The Goodness of God. I might even do that tonight. I don't know. We'll see what happens. That's a newer song that's just written in the last few years. And everybody loves that song. I love to sing that song. And you can't sing that without feeling that praise for the Lord well up inside you. So I praise God for songs like that. But so many of the, much of the new stuff, maybe I'm just too old, but it just doesn't touch heaven for me. And those I have no time for. I want songs that were born around the throne of God, that take me to the throne of God, and bless me with the presence of my wonderful Savior. Okay, praise the Lord. We'll play just a little bit here. Speaking of old songs.
beautiful presence of the Lord. Turn your eyes upon the Lord. Turn your affections to the Lord.
sometimes like that for a while and just let those songs just kind of bring a healing salve to your spirit, isn't it? Yeah. It's a wonderful thing to just steal away, I like to call it. Steal away with Jesus and just you and him. Nothing else really matters. Praise God. All right. Sweetie, I need a bottle of water in the worst way. Could you fetch one for me? I forgot to bring it with me tonight. Praise the Lord. Mm. Mm. It's different doing an hour for you in front of a camera than it is doing an hour in front of a live congregation. How? Well, because sometimes I take breaks and the people keep singing. But here, I can't hear you, so I have to sing all the time. So it takes a little bit more energy on this side of the, of the microphone because we don't have the live audience, so... I probably don't even think that that was information you cared about. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it tonight.
me going did it get you going boy what a great great song my goodness and how long has that blessed the church oh holy 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 i love that that verse i didn't sing tonight all the saints adore you casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea cherubim and cher cherubim and cherubim falling down before you ah what a picture it paints. Wow. Mm. If you want to hear that sung on one of our CDs that is on the uh, You're My Glory CD. All right. So is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus that I did earlier tonight. And both of those songs are very anointed on that project. We had a wonderful live audience at the Pikes Peak Worship Center, uh, the Pikes Peak Worship Festival at the Pikes Peak Center in Colorado Springs many, many moons ago and captured that and it was just wonderful. We, we had a yearly uh, worship festival that would draw between 12 and 1,500 people and they were just worship animals. They loved to just come and soak and, 
and worship the Lord, and oh, the presence of God. If you attended one of those, you know what I'm talking about. The intensity of the presence of God was so great um, that uh, it just it just renewed us. It was just a one lady wrote and said, I started crying as I walked into the auditorium because he was already there even before the service started. So we would do a Thursday night and a Friday morning and a Friday night. Uh, same format as our Sing Over America will have later this year. And uh, I'll be telling you more about that in, in the months to come. Praise God. Well, let's look into the Word for a few minutes. Especially coming out of that great song. I love that verse that we just sang. All thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Oh, friends, I got to tell you, that covers it. That is just the creme la creme. I'm telling you, that's, that's why we're here. That's why we exist to praise him. Remember, in Revelation, he said that everything was made for his pleasure. So you never, ever give God more pleasure than when you're praising him and honoring him. So turn, with that in mind, to Psalm 149. And um, how much time do I got? A little bit. 149 and 150. All right? And uh, let's just read a little bit about the praise. How about a little music, Terry? Oh, yeah, I'm glad you asked. Psalm 149, and this has to be from David. It doesn't say at the top of this psalm who wrote it, but I think this was a Davidic psalm. You know why? Because he says, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. David said that off and on through the psalms. And you know why? Because David was not satisfied with going into the temple and offering up some written chant that had a melody put to it that they had sung 249 times before that out of religious exercise because David met with God out there on the, in the fields with his harp. And you heard me say that God, I think, pulled back the, the, the heaven's curtain and let him see some of this glory of God. And he said, when I consider the heavens, the moon and the stars which you've ordained, what is man? What is man? And so he went back to the temple and he said, we can't worship like this. We've got to create new songs. So he said, sing unto the Lord a new song. Create something that he's doing in you. Put a melody to it of his mercy, of his grace, of his healing touch, of his sustaining power, of his provision for you, of his love for your family. Sing about that. Sing a new song to the Lord. How fantastic. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Remember, Israel was a people, not a place, when he talks about Israel. Those are, those are his people. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing. Oh, have you ever seen anointed dancing? I've seen a lot of stuff that I don't know what it is. It's not anointed. But I've also seen that power of God on an individual. And their, their feet just, there's a difference about it. I can't put it into words. But it's in a powerful expression of worship and praise. Make melody to him with the tambourine and the lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Ooh, I love that. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. To execute vengeance on the nations. 
right there, that shows you something. The two-edged sword was not enough to defeat the armies, the evil armies. The people of God needed praise on their lips because that acknowledges the power of the great victor, of the great warrior, of the champion. You need more than just physical tools. You need the power of praise and acknowledgement of his power. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. And then quickly, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. This little 18 by 20 room is a sanctuary every Wednesday at 7 o'clock because we entertain him and he touches us with his presence. Jesus has been here. The Holy Spirit has been here every single week that we've gathered. And I hope you can sense that right where you are. Praise him in his mighty heavens. We do that when we lift up songs of exaltation. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. I do that, don't I? Not tonight, but I do that. I've had some dental surgery and I'm trying to let all that heal. And my dentist got mad at me because I, I got ahead of her and my wife got mad at me too. She just gave me the evil eye. But um, I wanted to play so badly and I shouldn't have because I was bleeding afterwards and it was not a good thing. And please pray from my mouth that it will be completely restored and healed when all this is said and done sometime in the next 29 years. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. You know, the keyboard is a modern-day harp. The harp stood upright, and the grand piano lays down, but it's still the shape of a harp, isn't it? And I've been playing that, that horizontal harp since I was three years old. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Once in a while, Lizzie will grab her tambourine on a fun song and, and play it, and she plays it well. And I just love the, the sound of praise that comes from the tambourine. Praise him with strings and pipe. You know me, I am one who loves a lush orchestra. Nothing thrills me more than hearing a large string section uh, play their violins and violas and cellos and string basses and just make this beautiful, huge, big sound. Oh, to stand in the studio while they're doing it and to hear the air of the bows go across the strings, it's thrilling. It really is. It's powerful. And see, God is worthy of all that. Let everything that has breath give praise. He's worthy because everything was made for his pleasure. So whoever created that thing called a violin, it was created for the pleasure of the Lord. God put that idea into somebody who ever heard of stretching wire across a piece of wood and, and playing it and getting tone out of it. But every instrument was, was made that way, blowing through bent tubing and getting all kinds of beautiful notes high and low. It's amazing what can happen to glorify the Lord. It's powerful. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him, let's see. Praise him with uh, loud clashing cymbals. There you go. You see, heaven's going to be a loud, loud place. If you're a quiet worshiper, you need to really modify your, your style because it's going to be noisy up there. The sound of many rushing waters and peals of thunder. That's the worship that's going on around the throne. You and I really don't have a concept of what that is. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Oh, that's good stuff. That is good, good stuff. Amen? Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will see Of the goodness of God and All my life you have been faithful I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Yes, we will, Lord. Yes, we will. How can we not give you praise? How could we not give you our worship, Lord? Hmm. There's just no one else worthy. Think about it tonight, friends. Oh, my life, you have been so, so good. With my last breath, as long as I am able, I will sing. the goodness to end this program. We started it with talking about what? For the Lord is good. We end it doing what? Talking about the goodness of God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. We praise him for what he's done. We worship him for who he is. That's where the intimate love songs are born. So thank you, Lord. Let praise, which is the fruit of our lips, run rampant in our lives. Just let it be the first thing in the morning, the last thing at night. David said, seven times a day will I praise you. It's good to take time each day. Set it aside for a minute or two or five or ten and just praise Him for what He's done and watch how happy it makes you. I hope you've enjoyed an hour with Jesus. It's been our privilege to be in your homes today, tonight, this morning, whenever you're watching. And I thank you for being such faithful followers of this ministry. Many of you are supporters. You send in monthly donations as a glory partner or just a donation whenever the Holy Spirit lays it on your heart. 
and we are so grateful for it. Thank you for taking care of us as we go about taking his presence to the nations. We love you all. We hope to see you soon. Again, check out the website, newglory.org, and you can find out everything about the ministry. Read my current blog that's in there and, and uh, find out where we're going or what products we have. We have accompaniment tracks for many songs on Your Kingdom Come, so take advantage of that. And uh, until we see you again, for Liz on the other side of the cameras and myself, bye-bye for now.